Hello everyone, my name is Sung Hyop Kim, Professor of Radiology and Urology at Seoul National University Hospital. In this session, I would like to share my experience of how we can make a diagnosis of Nutcracker syndrome using non-invasive imaging techniques. Nutcracker syndrome is caused by compression of left renal vein between aorta and superior mesenteric artery, resulting in left renal vein hypertension that causes intermittent gross hematuria due to rupture of thin-walled septum between small veins and collecting systems in the renal calyx or phonesis. Sometimes this syndrome may cause microscopic hematuria or proteinuria instead of gross hematuria. Let's look at the history of this syndrome. In 1937, Grant's anatomy book described that there is potential compression of left renal vein. In 1950, terminology of left renal vein entrapment was first used. In 1971, aorta and the superior mesenteric artery were described as two arms of a nutcracker. In 1972, the shepherd named this condition as Nutcracker syndrome. And in 1974, the first case of surgical treatment for this syndrome was reported. Nutcracker syndrome usually occurs in young, thin, and previously healthy people. These patients usually have small amount of retroperitoneal fat, which is working as a cushion between the aorta and the SMA, and these patients usually have prominent lumbar lordotic curve. The first question in this talk is, can we suspect Nutcracker syndrome from these anatomic changes? In Nutcracker syndrome, as compared with normal, left renal vein will be narrower at the aortomedentric portion and wider at the hilar portion. But again, the question is how narrow and how wide is abnormal? Because normally left renal vein in this aortomesenteric area is compressed in certain degree between aorta and superior mesenteric artery. So it is difficult to answer to this question because there are too much overlap of data between Nutcracker patient group and the normal control group as you see in the results of our previous studies. If we look for previous articles regarding left renal vein diameter, we can find two articles, one in all age group and the other in children group, saying that very commonly in 74% in one article and 51% in the other article, hilar portion of left renal vein is dilated 50% or more than diameter of aortomesenteric left renal vein. Both articles said that this is a finding of normal variant. The angle between aorta and the superior mesenteric artery, so-called aortomesenteric angle, is another anatomic parameter that can be easily measured at ultrasound or CT. According to these reports, this angle is almost 90 degree in normal, but is much narrower in nutcracker patients. But again, this parameter is difficult to use because of too much overlap. So, to this question of can we suspect Nutcracker syndrome from these anatomic changes, for example, left renal vein diameter or aortomesenteric angle? The answer is yes, we can do, but not well enough because of big overlap between patient's group and normal controls. Now, what are current diagnostic criteria of Nutcracker syndrome? Of course, there should be no other causes of hematuria. High proportion of isomorphic RBC in urine on phase contrast microscopy. It means that Morphology of urine RBC in Nutcracker patient is similar to the morphology of RBC in peripheral blood. Of course, hematuria comes from left side on cystoscopy. And the final diagnosis should be made at venography with pressure gradient greater than 3 mm mercury, but this is an invasive procedure. 
The next question is, are there diagnostic criteria for Nutcracker syndrome better than anatomic changes? And the answer will be, yes, it is flow velocity that we can measure using non-invasive Doppler ultrasound. For ideal and incompressible liquid, the amount of flow through this tubular pathway of different diameter should be the same, so the velocity in this narrow area should be faster than the velocity of this wide area. This is the principle of continuity. Because normally left renal vein in aortomesentric portion is narrower than the hilar portion, velocity here is normally higher than this hilar area. 15 to 25 centimeter per sec here and 40 to 50 centimeter per sec here. Here is a patient suspicious of Nutcracker syndrome. Velocity here in hilar portion is in normal range, but velocity here in aortomesentric portion is 152, much higher than normal range of 40 to 50, indicating that the compression between aorta and SMA is much more severe than usual. And the venography shows evidence of severe compression here with some collateral vessels. And the pressure gradient across this compressed area was 6 mm mercury, so we can make a diagnosis of Nutcracker syndrome. Another case of Nutcracker syndrome, left-sided hematuria, narrow left renal vein at aortomesentric portion and narrow aortomesentric angle. High velocity seen at Doppler, which was 112 cm per second, and the pressure gradient was 4 mm mercury. We did a Doppler study in 1996 in adult group, and colleagues in pediatric radiology section in my hospital did a similar study in children group in 2006. We measured the peak velocity at left renal vein at hilar and aortomesentric portions. In our study in adult group, there were big differences in the velocity at aortomesentric portion and velocity ratio of those two portions between nutcracker and the control groups. We proposed the thresholds of 80 cm per second of peak velocity of aortomesentric portion and the velocity ratio of 5 in making a diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome with reasonably high sensitivity and specificity. These are results in children group, and they reported a similar difference and the proposed thresholds of 93 cm per second velocity and the velocity ratio of 4.7 with high sensitivity and specificity. So, to the question of how fast is abnormally fast, we have an answer that if peak velocity at aortomesentric portion is higher than 80 or 90 cm per second, we can strongly suspect Nutcracker syndrome. There are some technical considerations. With usual neutral position of transducer, we do not have technical problems in getting clear venous flow spectra from this hilar portion because Doppler angle is quite optimal but it is almost impossible to get clear spectra from this aortomesentric portion because the angle between ultrasound and the flow is rectangular. Then the way to improve Doppler angle in this portion is to turn the transducer counterclockwise so that this aortomesentric portion is located in the left side of the image. But still, it is difficult to, to get clear spectra because of narrow vein between pulsating aorta and SMA. Then, if we make a sampling box wider, now we can get clear spectra of venous flow from this narrow aortomesentric portion of left renal vein. Now, next question is, can we estimate renal cable pressure gradient non-invasively with Doppler ultrasound data without doing invasive venography? The answer is theoretically yes.
theoretical background of this estimation of pressure gradient is well-known Bernoulli principle of hydrodynamics showing the relations among pressure P, velocity V, and elevation or height H. This is the equation, quite complex. For blood in the body, H is negligible, so we can erase this part and the equation becomes much simpler. We can change the equation like this, then we can calculate pressure gradient if we know two velocities, one in AO2 mesentric and the other in hyla portions. If we put normal values of 40 and 20 cm per second, and these values of pressure and the density, theoretical pressure gradient will be 0.48 mm mercury, which is consistent with the normal value of less than 1 mm mercury. If we put 80 and 20, gradient will be 2.39. If they are 150 and 20, it will be 8.79, and if 220, it will be 15.74 mm mercury. Let's look at some cases. Case 1, velocity was 152 and 22.5 with theoretical gradient of 8.98. At venography, measured gradient was 6 mm mercury. Case 2, 112 and 11.3. Theoretical gradient is 4.94 and measured gradient was 4 mm mercury. Case 3, 110 and 17.2. Theoretical gradient 4.69 and the measured gradient 3 mm mercury. Case 4, velocities 124 and 43. Calculated gradient was 5.38 and measured gradient was 4 mm mercury. This is a table showing calculated gradient and the measured real gradient in those four cases. You can see that measured gradient is lower than calculated gradient in all cases. The reason is why I am sure that it is due to these collateral vessels that cause decompression of left renal vein. Next question is, can we suggest Nutcracker syndrome SCT? because nowadays CT is the most common study for evaluation of patients with intermittent growth hematuria. To answer this question, we had done a study in 2011. We classified the shape of renal vein compression in three types, big sign positive, club narrowing, and smooth tapering, and found that this big sign was useful in distinction between Nutcracker syndrome and normal, with high sensitivity and specificity. We also measured the beak angle using this method, and the beak angle of 32 degree was a useful threshold in this distinction. Also, left renal vein diameter ratio and SMA angle can be used with these thresholds. This is a Nutcracker syndrome patient included in this article we see peak sign with 59 degree peak angle, very narrow SMA angle, 15 degree, and compression of left renal vein at this part with collateral flow to the gonadal veins, and the pressure gradient was 5 mm mercury. Here is another case of Nutcracker syndrome, venous flow velocity of 187 cm per second at aorta mesentric portion with a calculated pressure gradient of 13.79 mm mercury. CT shows big sign and 62.4 degree big angle. All these findings are consistent with Nutcracker syndrome and probably we do not need venography to confirm, but we did and the pressure gradient was 6 mm mercury in this patient. Now, the other finding we may see in Nutcracker syndrome is jet phenomenon of contrast opacified venous flow across the aorta mesentric portion 
when we scroll up and down the early phase contrast enhanced CT images. This is normal CT images in early phase and we can see smooth movement of contrast along the dependent portion of left renal vein. This is normal plug flow and this is abnormal jet flow. You can easily see the difference. In this patient, very high flow velocity 194 and calculated pressure gradient is almost 15 mm mercury. CT shows clear jet phenomenon. Then we can make a diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome without doing venography. The last part of this talk is variations of nutcracker syndrome. They are posterior nutcracker, combined anterior and posterior nutcracker, nutcracker in left-sided IVC, nutcracker in IVC duplication, and nutcracker associated with renal tumor. This is a case of nutcracker syndrome in retroaortic left renal vein that is compressed between the aorta and vertebral body with 129 cm per second velocity in this patient. This is called posterior nutcracker. This is a case of nutcracker syndrome in left-sided IBC. Large amount of venous blood from left lower extremity crosses this aortomesentric portion, and so the venous flow from left kidney is hindered by this non-opacified flow from left-sided IBC. In this patient, the velocity was 145 and the pressure gradient was 3 mm mercury. This is a case of nutcracker syndrome in double IBC with velocity of 112 and about 5 mm mercury pressure gradient. Here are two different patients with renal cell carcinoma of the left kidney. You can see nutcracker phenomenon with jetting contrast because of increased amount of venous flow due to hypervascular venous carcinoma. So I would like to finish this talk of nutcracker syndrome by summarizing that nutcracker syndrome is not a rare disease entity. Doppler ultrasound is useful. Renal cable pressure gradient can be estimated from Doppler data. Contrast enhanced CT findings such as big sign, big angle, and contrast jet phenomenon may add specificity to the diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome and probably we can make a diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome on the basis of Doppler ultrasound and CT findings without doing invasive venography with measurement of pressure gradient. Thank you for joining this session and please email me if you have any questions.